So the topic is Arya Nagarjuna and how he appears in art. Arya Nagarjuna is a very important, uh, very important Buddhist figure from the first, second century of the Common Era. But he's also commonly represented in art. But it's important to understand how he's represented in art and in what context. So, first of all, we, we, we've dealt a little bit with the confusions concerning Arya Nagarjuna in another video. But Nagarjuna is, uh, is a monk. He wears monastic attire. He's unusual that he has Anushnisha on the crown of the head. He also is uh, adorned with a hood of um, seven snakes behind him, which rise up and sort of uh, frame his head. Often he's uh, performing the teaching gesture, but it, it's not uh, not always the case. It could be a, a gesture of explication, or he could be holding a book. So there, there's some variation that you can find with Nagarjuna. And being an Indian uh, and a monk, he doesn't wear shoes, and he doesn't wear a, a... Typically, he doesn't wear a shirt, but in Tibetan tradition, of course, they they sometimes add a shirt, but they make it a blue color. So the blue uh, is uh, an artistic way of indicating that it's an Indian teacher, uh, and then the orange or red monk's shirts indicate that they're uh, Tibetan or, or rather non-Indian. So Nagarjuna is... is important um, in, in several different contexts. And these contexts are, are, are different collections of figures that are put together. And the most important is the, and the earliest, is the six ornaments and two excellent ones of the southern continent. So these are the most important Mahayana scholars of the time. And, um, and they're the most important Mahayana scholars commented on even today. So you can have a single depiction with all eight figures, or they can be spread over a eight composition set with a central figure of Shakyamuni Buddha or Amitabha Buddha. Then we have Nagarjuna as represented in the uh, some of the various groups of the eighty-four Mahasiddhas, uh, and then he he's. He can just be a, a simple figure amongst the 84, or if it's a single composition with Vajradhara at the center, or there could be a, a, a number of compositions made to represent the 84, and they're divided into three paintings or five or seven, and then often Nagarjuna is at the center of one of these compositions from the set. Then we have Nagarjuna and the eight great siddhas, the eight great Mahasiddhas. Now this is really an Indian system. I don't know who the who the originator was, but we do find it in in some Pala art and then early Nepalese art, where we have a certain uh, grouping of what are considered by some scholars of the time or practitioners as being the most important of the of the eighty four Mahasiddhas. Then they have a group of eight, and they include people like. Nagarjuna, of course, uh, possibly Dombihiruka, Luipa, Padmavajra, uh, like that, Indrabhuti. So these can also be painted as a single composition or as a set of nine paintings with the addition of uh, either Vajradhara um, as a central painting or Padmasambhava, and then each of the eight Mahasiddhas uh, uh, being the center of, of the other compositions. So we also have mandala depictions where, especially with the Saki and Kagyu, they're the main ones in Jonang, where, where for the semi-wrathful and wrathful mandalas, you have the eight cemeteries surrounding uh, the, the outer perimeter of the mandala. And in those cemeteries, according to the Tantra text, it says each is occupied by a, a siddha, zombies, a cloud, uh, a worldly god, a tree, a lake, a fire. There's all these items that are mentioned. But the Sakyas and the, and the Kagyus, what they do is they, they take these eight great uh, Mahasiddhas and then they populate the eight cemeteries with those uh, figures. Uh, then what we have is also we have... Uh, the teacher, um, Jed Tsongkhapa, and in the 15th and early 16th century, it's very common to paint him as a central figure and then to have the Yogacara lineage running down one side of the painting and then the Madhyamaka 
down the other, and at the top are are uh, Arya Nagarjuna representing the Madhyamaka, and at the top of for the Yogacara you have Maitreya and Asanga. So that's another common way of depicting uh, finding Nagarjuna in compositions. Now another is is randomly in paintings where you have uh, central figures of teachers or possibly a mandala, um, but then you have the lineage in registers at the top and sides and bottom. And for that you can also, with those you can also find Nagarjuna. Uh, usually it's a, it's Guya Samaja lineages or the Chakrasambara or um, lineages such as those where you'll find him and he's always no, a little bit more noticeable than other figures because he has the uh, hood of seven snakes. Just an introduction into how to recognize Nagarjuna.